Okay, I uh, hope you see my screen and hello. Uh, today <coughs> we will be talking about how to make uh, PM happy. So I'm uh, working uh, in SoftServe for more than 10 years. And during this career path, I uh, was collaborating with a bunch of uh, managers and they usually do not hesitate to share their pain points. So at some point uh, I have decided to like, I simplify a little bit their life and that's how the idea of this uh, presentation uh, was born so um, let's move on and switch to agenda and today we will be talking about the uh, challenges uh, that PM usually faced with uh, we will be talking about project plan and its purpose also, a lot of time we will spend for uh, discussing toolkit uh, for crafting this project plan. And yeah, the, the real life uh, use cases, uh, it's a real life demo uh, with uh, some real project. So you could see how it's uh, the solution in general, how it works. <coughs> So how to make a uh, project manager happy? Uh, and this is the project manager. And, uh, <laughs> as you can see, it looks happy, doesn't he? Uh, so how do we make uh, him happy? It may seem uh, like uh, the answer is simple. You just need to ensure that every project that PM is responsible for is successful. However, uh, ensuring the success of every project uh, that PM is responsible for uh, can be challenging. And today uh, we are going to explore one, the, one of the approach to achieving this goal. Uh, let's get back to the questions uh, that do not allow project manager to sleep peacefully. Uh, when and what would be ready? How do cross team dependencies impact delivery dates? How particular technical implementation connected to particular business value? <laughs> what amount of resources, mostly human resources, do you need for achieving a particular goal? And uh, the most interesting part is like uh, gun charts, uh, projects, uh, overall project status, dashboards, some reports, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so far, uh, like uh, everything is simple, yeah. So we have a couple of questions that we need to address. Um, what if I tell you that there is one-stop shop uh, solution to address all of them? Usually, uh, people uh, using different tools, uh, different approaches to address those questions, and it appears that everything could be done in one place by one tool and this is called project plan so what is project plan and uh, you probably already know that well-crafted project plan uh, it's an essential tool for any project manager uh, it serves as a blueprint for the project success uh, <clears throat> and today uh, in this guide uh, we will explore uh, the key element of it of uh, comprehensive project plan, I would say, and some tips how to keep it uh, the project uh, up and going, and that will make your project manager happy throughout the low, the whole project life cycle. So, uh, what are the key elements? Project plan need to have the its purpose. So you need to clearly uh, define the goal. Uh, of the project that you are going to achieve uh, or objective, whatever you will call it. Mm, you also need to identify milestones and uh, what will be achieved uh, and what will be ready by those days. Mm, uh, also, you need to outline dependencies between teams. If there is more than one team, there would be dependencies. And uh, you need to decide how teams will be collaborate with each other to achieve the particular goal. Also, you need to forecast the, uh, how uh, some business value uh, will be 
fulfilled by some technical implementation. Uh, this will um, help you to prioritize uh, different work streams. And uh, the most interesting one is capacity calculation or team composition. You need to know how many developers, QAs, automation QAs uh, you need for, for this project. So the project plan uh, is a complex tool. Yeah, and it's designed uh, to solve complex challenges. So if you have something simple, simple project for creating some uh, simple website, you probably could uh, keep everything in your mind and do not bother uh, yourself with creating the project plan. But if it became uh, complex enough, if there is uh, there are a bunch of different teams, uh, a lot of people involved, uh, it's very hard to keep everything in, in one mind. And besides this, uh, you need to in, uh, increase the bus factor so, uh, for that project. Uh, so you would need to somehow uh, outline everything in paper or it's more comprehensive would be to do it digitally. So uh, project plan is a tool for complex uh, challenges. And that's uh, like that that's came uh, that lets us think that uh, since we have uh, complex challenges, we need some very smart uh, toolkit to address uh, all those challenges. And uh, we have uh, we have couple and for different project phases, like uh, planning, we will be using smart sheet with uh, addition from formulas from success effort estimation campaign. For implementation execution phase, we will be using smart sheet, uh, the same smart sheet. And for monitoring and control phase, uh, we will be using reports and dashboard based on the, again, same smart sheet. So what is a smart sheet? From Wiki, it's a software, the service uh, offering uh, for collaboration and work management. But uh, in general, you could consider it as an Excel-like table on steroids. So um, there is uh, like uh, it's not free. So uh, uh, for different purposes, uh, you would require probably more uh, pricey model. But let's not focus today uh, on the pricing model, uh, just to make sure you're aware about the uh, possible options. So there is still free version that could be used uh, for really small uh, projects. <clears throat> and the other uh, tool uh, from our arsenal is software efforts estimation template. And if you ever participate in any software for sale, you're probably familiar with uh, it. And big shout out to guys who have created, crafted it. It worked. Those formulas are correct. And it's proven by like four years of practical use. Uh, my personal practical use, sorry. Uh, let's get back to the question that uh, do not allow project manager uh, sleep peacefully. And uh, how mentioned toolkit uh, could address them. Here is the first screenshot, and uh, you can see that in the uh, primary column, uh, you will be, you, you could uh, see currently you are not able to read them just because this is a kind of protection of the um, project. Confident, confident uh, data, uh, but in general, this is the business. Some business goals uh, written in, in this smart sheet, and uh, on the on the one uh, screen, you are able to see that uh, business goal with ID two would be uh, finished by July seventeen. Business goal with uh, ID 8 will be finished by July 11. 
So this is probably most uh, crucial things that will let you to understand like how cool this whole solution is. Like you have some business goal and then after some magic, you could say, okay, it would be delivered by this day. But uh, as you probably already know, there is no magic in this world. And behind this, uh, <laughs> behind this uh, world, uh, there are a lot of work, uh, a lot of uh, meetings, efforts spent by team and project manager. So the next question, uh, what are cross team dependencies and how we could see them? And here it is. So we have some working item uh, and we can see uh, that, uh, for example, item uh, 117 uh, couldn't be started until item 115 and 111 will be finished. So this is visually represented and this also represented by dates one particular uh, possible start and finish dates for item 117. The next question, uh, how is particular technical implementation connected to be a particular business value? Mm -hmm. And mm, there is simple uh, like question, what is the point of implementing some cool technical solution if they don't bring uh, business value? Uh, so, yeah, that, that's why we have this connection of uh, business goals, business objectives, and uh, they are somehow connected to work item. And work item is like technical implementation that is required to achieve this uh, business goal. So you could see this hierarchy when a business objective with ID2 uh, consists of uh, several key results. And each key result uh, consists of work item. Uh, in our uh, practice, business objectives and key results is something that is uh, created, crafted, outlined, provided by the product uh, owner, by the business owner, most cases by the client. And this is like uh, blue and light blue roles. The work item is something that uh, actually uh, engineers uh, suggest as a possible solution for achieving particular key results and business objectives. And they're usually uh, created by architects, tech leads, uh, BAs, etc. So, uh, and as you understand, like because of this. Uh, parent-child uh, connection, you could always say that uh, this particular uh, technical solution 2.1.7 is contributing to uh, business goal with ID2. Uh, okay, so let's switch to the next one. Uh, how much resources are required? Um, what should be the capacity of the team and what like, technical profiles of the team? Uh, so uh, at this moment, uh, we actually start using those uh, formulas uh, that I have mentioned that were created uh, in software efforts and estimation template. And they helping us to based on some um, estimation uh, techniques in our again our particular case we are using part uh, we are calculating the capacity for the team for particular quarter and uh, this help us to calculate the actual number of developers or qas or automation qas that you need for particular quarter to achieve in particular uh, uh, goals, like to covering the scope uh, that need to be covered in this quarter. Uh, why quarters? Because uh, we are usually using uh, OKR framework. So um, that's why uh, it could be like change a little bit and it could be um, years, it could be 
uh, months, whatever you want. So this, uh, everything is adjustable. So uh, in this screenshot, you see uh, like how the capacity of the team is being calculated and uh, how, uh, how many devs required to cover a particular scope. <clears throat> and the most crucial uh, column here in this screenshot is the dev delta. So uh, at some point uh, you just uh, check in if uh, your delta is not far away from the zero. It could be positive, uh, it, it should always uh, aim to, to zero. From positive or negative uh, Point, but uh, the, the closer the delta uh, val uh, the value from delta column to zero, the better. The more uh, chances that you will uh, achieve your commitment, and there wouldn't be any uh, underestimate or overestimate or uh, under commitment or over commitment. Uh, this formulas also allow you to count uh, to take into account the vacation day so if you have a team uh, with uh, five developers and each of them is going to take like six uh, day uh, vacation uh, you just multiply them and you have 30 as uh, vacations for your team for particular quarter and this also being uh, taken uh, into account during the capacity calculation uh, we will see this in details during the day. And the next question is uh, all about uh, being able to automatically build uh, some project uh, gun chart, some dashboard, some reports, etc. So they could uh, look like this, 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 and this. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> that's like a theoretical part of our uh, presentation. And let me switch to the real use cases demo. Here it is. So this is uh, the smart sheet. This is smart sheet application, but it could be also opened uh, in the regular browser. So it depends on your preference. Uh, there is no any limitation of uh, two different approaches how to you, how you will use uh, smart sheet. So uh, what I'm currently showing you is like uh, there is a count on SoftServe and uh, there is uh, we, we are working with our client on dedicated team model. So there are more than ten teams uh, who is working on different products, uh, but always share the same environments. Some uh, shared services, etc. So there is always uh, always dependencies on each other. Uh, so uh, here we have like a list of uh, business objectives. Uh, as I mentioned, they are crafted uh, by uh, business people, by client. Uh, we have uh, the expected delivery. This is something that again provided by client. Uh, column uh, team uh, where we see which team actually will be working on achieving this particular goal. Then we have uh, the owner. So this is the person who is responsible for making sure that this is <clears throat> this uh, goals will be achieved. So most likely this is the product owner. Uh, we have the status, something that is changed manually, a percentage of completion. Uh, it's uh, you enter it manually for work items and it's automatically being calculated for key results and uh, business objectives. Start and finish date again uh, manually entered for working items and automatically calculated for business objectives and key results. 
Uh, besides this, we have the duration is the uh, real uh, difference of this between these two dates, and we are only um, counting working days. So, uh, smart sheet is smart enough to filter out uh, weekends and holidays. We have uh, categories, so it's mostly uh, used as a tagging tool uh, in case you need to create some uh, reports in future. And besides this, uh, we have a couple of uh, columns that help us uh, to, to estimate the work. And the difference between this estimation and start and finish date, and amount of day, the same uh, as the difference between the story points uh, for regular story and uh, how many days will the developer will be spent for implementing this story. Uh, so <clears throat> what we have now, each uh, business objective consists of key results. Uh, each key result consists of a working item. Uh, work item could uh, be uh, also consist of other uh, working item. Why we are doing this? It's just for tracking purposes. So uh, if it's easier uh, for, for, for some particular reason, you need to split uh, this work uh, into two possible uh, pieces. Uh, and you could do this by creating this hierarchy uh, dependency. Uh, why we are doing this? Uh, mostly because of splitting work between quarters when you need to understand what work would be done in uh, quarter two and what would be done in quarter three, for example. The other use case is uh, when there is a dependency team that uh, is not required from you to uh, finish all the work, and, but to start their own uh, part. But it would be enough to have like some piece of work finished and they could put a dependency on particular item. So that, that led, uh, led us uh, to make these uh, dates on the finish column more precise. <clears throat> okay, uh, as I mentioned, uh, blue and light blue, uh, roles are fulfilled by uh, product people, uh, white items, work items are fulfilled by technical people. So uh, we have uh, different uh, views here in pro uh, project plan. So this is the grid view uh, when you have only rows and columns. Besides this, we have Gantt view. So it's automatically create your Gantt chart for your working items. Uh, with uh, displaying the dependencies. Uh, I didn't mention, but uh, for dependencies, uh, we have two columns when we could specify uh, which uh, row dependent on which. So you're just putting the uh, row number that you depend on in the dependency column and that's it. It's very easy. So, uh, as you can see, like immediately <clears throat> the new dependency appears in Gunshot. And you probably also uh, notice that there is some uh, movement in the Gunshot uh, in terms of start and finish date. So uh, it's smart enough to automatically calculate uh, uh, the possible start and finish date. And that's actually how we uh, like uh, having this more precise and precise uh, values uh, for finish date uh, during the implementation. Because like, the estimation that uh, was done uh, on the beginning of the project, they, they are very high level. And like because of this cone of uncertainty, uh, it could be far away from the real dates. But during the implementation, when you get more precise uh, requirements, when you get um, more details uh, about uh, how you you are going to implement this or this or that particular uh, technical solution. Uh, your estimates uh, being update change, and that help uh, like because of uh, you are updating these values in project one. It's automatically calculate the 
a delivery date for the business objectives. So as you can see right now, uh, we have uh, for this first business objective, delivery date is uh, 1st of August. And if for some reason, uh, some items wouldn't be ready uh, in, in the particular uh, time, and you could just, for example, as for, for this purposes, yeah. Uh, as you can see, once I have my changes to one of the work items, it's automatically uh, recalculate the key result and uh, business objective. And you can see that you're already uh, like half a year uh, behind the schedule. Um, there is uh, some automation uh, provided by uh, Smartsheet that help you uh, get. Uh, be, be notified uh, and be up to date regarding such uh, updates. So uh, the person who uh, assigned as owner of particular uh, business objective immediately will get the notification that finish date was changed. So <clears throat> once we do this, uh, we, some responsible person will be aware that this delivery date was just moved a half year ahead. And this is something that requires his attention. What happened? Why? If it's like some uh, just um, human mistake or it's something that need to be uh, somehow communicated with clients and we need to figure out what to do. Okay, the next uh, possible view is card view. Uh, so um, in the way how uh, we are using Smartsheet, it's not very useful since uh, it's just groping by the uh, uh, item, uh, but still you are able to use uh, this this way to view the whole work and calendar view, so the, the same uh, work, just uh, grow by group by dates. If you're interested, you are able to automatically get this type of view. Okay, uh, so um, <clears throat> the other uh, interesting thing that I would want to share with you is that uh, how the, like, real uh, in real world uh, this project plan is being fulfilled so, uh, and how you could uh, calculate the team size uh, team composition for a particular quota in case you are also using the dedicated team uh, model so uh, when some business needs arise uh, product owner or product manager add uh, additional uh, item here. And then uh, we are working, uh, we are usually using uh, such tool as a workshop uh, to elicitate like, what does it mean to, to achieve something and how it could be <clears throat> translated into some particular uh, key results. Uh, by the way, business objectives and key results, uh, those names were inspired by the OKR framework. Uh, so uh, we are using the same approach, like business objectives should be inspirable, key results should be measurable. And uh, after this workshop, uh, we have crafted uh, business objective and several key results that will let us Mm, to say that this business objective is uh, achieved if each of these key results will be achieved. And since they are measurable, it's clearly understandable when we achieve it or not. Uh, at this moment, uh, work with uh, product people and uh, technical uh, uh, specialists uh, came into play. So uh, most likely uh, there are a couple of sessions, uh, like meetings when uh, tech leads, uh, maybe some uh, key st uh, stakeholders from the team uh, 
talk uh, gather together talk about this particular key results and what they could uh, do to make sure that this key result result is achievable and we, when they identify something they just put it as a child for this particular key result there could be one two item ten item whatever uh, the hard limitation for uh, smart sheet is uh, 11,000 crores. So far, we are using about six and six and a half hundred uh, rows. So, and this is for 10 plus teams. So, we still will <laughs> have a lot of space to grow. Um, the okay yeah uh, what what next so they put uh, some names uh, what to do uh, they put uh, some possible uh, start and finish date or if they uh, put uh, dependencies like uh, if this item depends on some other item uh, start and finish uh, they will be uh, generated automatically by smart sheet because start date will be the next date of the the predecessor uh, complete date. The other thing that uh, is important for team to do is to create uh, to provide the estimation and possible quarter when this work could be done. So they are putting the quarter, for example, Q3, and they are trying to do the estimation. So as I mentioned, uh, we are using PERT uh, technique since it's the most uh, convenient way to estimate some unknown scope and when you are doing this uh, long term planning uh, in most cases uh, there are a lot of unknown things <clears throat> so if you uh, estimation is done uh, in sprints uh, for one engineer so if you put one two three it means one engineer will be working uh, from one to three sprints to achieving this goal. Uh, there is also uh, automatically calculated uh, most likely value as 75% uh, uh, of these two, uh, of, of this period, but it could be overrided if uh, like team uh, think that most likely it wouldn't take more than one and a half and only in very worst in, in the worst cases there would be three sprints so they could override this value and that's it uh, for purpose of saving some time, uh, automation uh, capacity and manual uh, qa capacity is being calculated based on formulas like half uh, of the uh, depth capacity but again, uh, it could be manually overrided uh, if team considered like there is no uh, automation efforts for this work at all. So they just put zeros and that's it. But uh, there would be, for example, a lot of manual testing. They could, okay, they will spend uh, one uh, sprint or one and a half sprint for, for this particular work. And this is done uh, in the way how we're doing uh, this. Uh, let us uh, not spend a lot of time for, for this uh, estimation effort. So uh, we are asking teams to do uh, estimation and uh, scope elicitation for the next quarter during current quarter. So uh, teams uh, usually get uh, spent one hour or two hours uh, in a quarter in the spring for gathering together, talking about the next quarter, talking about um, possible um, business value that need to be achieved and how they could help with this. Uh, that's help us uh, to not be over uh, helmed during the OKR uh, planning the next OKR planning so everything is ready like uh, estimation are done on high level but it's also it's okay so uh, what actually is happening the, during the um, during the OKR planning 
at this moment, uh, most of these uh, columns are fulfilled and we are switching to other uh, smart sheet uh, table where we could uh, see the capacity report. And here is the uh, place where like um, all, all the beauty of, of this uh, so self, uh, effort estimation templates uh, displayed. Uh, we uh, have this uh, breakdown uh, when we uh, like have the team name and we have the quarters and what we actually want to understand uh, well, in what quarter uh, what uh, work need to be done. As you just saw, there were like uh, blue items uh, appeared uh, on the moment. It was a notification that there were some changes done in the source file. Source file, uh, I just did it like a few moments uh, before this. So this uh, report uh, automatically pulled the data from other smart sheet and the mentioned items already counted here, uh, mentioned changes. So uh, what we have here, uh, we have the summary uh, of the efforts for a particular uh, team. Here is the team name and the quarter. And it means uh, in Q4, uh, teams, uh, team will be spending from one and a half uh, sprint to two and 25. Uh, for doing their work. Uh, it's like not very real uh, numbers uh, because uh, we are like in the process of uh, switching uh, to, to this uh, smart sheet uh, capacity calculation approach. Previously, we were using the same formulas, but a little bit in a different way. And uh, so now we have this like uh, only one team do actually not one. I see a couple of teams already did it. So uh, this uh, estimation uh, are done. So this is the real estimation of the real team. And as you can see, like for Q2, they are planning to spend uh, <clears throat> 116 uh, sprints to 184 sprints uh for their work and yeah but this is just the whole uh capacity uh, the whole scope of the work uh, how we are actually calculating number of the people and for these purposes we have like continuation of this uh report and if you open the the same in here you could see that for Q2, you have a team with a uh, number of deaths, there is six, uh, capacity of it uh, would be five and five, and the actual amount of work for them is 27. So uh, this is not uh, possible for team to cover hold, uh, hold the scope. It means this scope need to be splitted by different quarters. So all the scope is not possible to cover in one quarter. That, that's how um, you are able to say, okay, we need to change something. Either we could add a team with 27 people in it, actually 28. And then, yeah, uh, our delta is almost zero. And then we, we would be able to cover this uh, scope. But team from, that consists of 28 people, it's something uh not uh convenient <laughs> way to to do uh, it's not a dry way i would say uh to go for for development so that's why uh, most likely we will do the opposite we will uh, change the scope so how to do this uh we need to switch back to the project plan <coughs> filter out the work that uh, belongs to this particular team. And start changing the, uh, when 
some some particular work could be done. So from Q2, you will be most likely switching to Q3. So we move some uh, work that team was going to do for this particular business objective uh, from Q2 to Q3. Save the changes. <clears throat> and then switching back here. Yeah. Waiting a few moments when changes will be pulled. Or if you don't want to change to wait, you could uh, update manually. Mm -hmm. Okay. As you can see, uh, the delta was changed. It was previously 22 uh, point something. And now uh, we have only 17. So it means uh, there is not enough work that was switched from Q2 to Q3. So you are switching back to project one and continue the same operation until you will have uh, delta almost zero uh, for particular quota. When delta is uh, zero, that's perfect. That's uh, something that team could, could uh, commit to. Okay, that's how it works uh, for planning. Besides this, uh, I would also want to show you the dashboard. So for people who are mostly interested in some uh, outcomes and they don't need to see those details, uh, like uh, most cases it's just executives, uh, you could craft uh, nice dashboards uh, that, that could contain all required information. So this is the example of dashboard uh, that usually being shared uh, on our sprint review and all uh, stakeholders uh, are able to see what's going on. So you have general uh, completion of the project percentage, uh, start date, uh, distribution by task, uh, distribution by percentage of complete for business objectives, distribution by object objectives by statuses, etc. So uh, everything is craftable. Uh, it depends on the information that you want to see. We have this uh, roadmap report when we have on the business objective. And like the most interesting part here is uh, like finish day. So again, you could see when something will be finished. If you're only interested in this uh, business objective 10, you will be looking only in this item and you don't need to like scroll uh, to open the project plan, scroll down, uh, looking for it, etc. So yeah, for business people, they're usually very busy, then don't, they don't like to do uh, such thing, like uh, do any filtering or scrolling or whatever. So for such purposes, we are using this dashboard and they could easily find the information that uh, they needed. Uh, also, we have this uh, project tracking uh report uh this is the uh, like items that a uh, project manager uh, need to be focused on uh, because this is the list of overdue tasks tasks that are uh, already overdue or close to uh, uh, to the finish date but they are not completed yet so uh, this like uh, this this could be the, the items for project manager for each day like they need to figure out what's going on, uh, if it's like some mistake or someone forget to update project plan or what the status of particular uh, scope of work, uh, etc. 
And we also have one more item. It's about the invalid task. So uh, during the planning, probably okay when you are not fulfill all items uh, for some particular role. But uh, if uh, some business objective switch to implementation phase, uh, there shouldn't be any task in this list from this particular uh, business objective. If they are, uh, again, that uh, require uh, focus of project manager uh, to figure out what, what is absent. Usually the status is absent, owner is absent, or start and finish date is absent. So uh, go understanding what needs to be checked and uh, fulfilled. And these uh, reports, they, they, they could be in one report, in one big dashboard, smaller dashboard, or you could manually uh, use particular uh, reports if you're only interested in having the information about roadmap, or if you're interested in, in the, some aggregation, uh, those reports could be created uh, by, um, like Additionally, depending on the way how you want to uh, get the, the information about your project. So aggregation on any uh, column is possible here. That's uh, probably all regarding the first use case. Uh, when we have a like, dedicated team, when we have huge scope, we only have a lot of teams and uh, they somehow collaborate with each other, depend uh, on each other, and we need to somehow deal with everything. And project managers are not doing this uh, by the like keeping everything in, in their head and somehow managing it. Everything uh, is on uh, in digital form, so uh, a lot of people uh, could access and see this. Uh, there is no need to like do this uh, continuous status report meeting or something else. Uh, for particular uh, business stakeholders, you could create uh, a dashboard that will require it, uh, that will contain required information for like for business uh, partners, like financial partner, for product uh, manager for engineering director, whatever, this particular information that they are interested in. Then that's actually very cool uh, things. And everything is automatically uh, updated based on the information from the same spreadsheet. Uh, the other use case that I want to share, uh, I, I will stop for a while uh, if you have any questions regarding uh, this particular case, or maybe you uh, want to ask something, so go ahead. Uh, is there somewhere smart sheet template to reuse uh, to manage projects with many teams? Uh, that, that's actually uh, the template that uh, you could use to manage a uh, project with many teams. Uh, the way uh, how to reuse it, it's like tricky because uh, as i mentioned this uh, smart sheet uh, is a sas uh, pricing model and like uh, once you created something and want to share it to uh, anyone in convenient way you need to buy some additional uh, add-on that will help to do this otherwise you could just uh, download the, mm, these files in the form of regular uh, microsoft excel files and then manually import uh, into new smart sheet account and then create a connection between them because like right now we have these two files and they know uh, one about other so there is connection created uh, between them uh, this is something that couldn't be uh, exported so you would need to create like this connection <clears throat> uh, but then this would be uh, like for free for you e again if you want to do everything in one click you would need to pay for this and yeah, they... thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, in presented uh, case study so uh, 
Uh, each team project manager uh, will update uh, information uh, regarding uh, his team or it's uh, like uh, product manager uh, uh, keep uh, maintain this uh, whole object for whole team. Uh, responsibilities and ownership it's like a question that uh, we are still struggling to figure out the answer uh, since like project managers are leaning to make the tech leads bas or just developers to update this project plan and like uh, those people are saying this project man uh, project plan is a man managerial tool so go ahead and update it by yourself so this is like this holy war probably will never finish and we are trying to like, make uh, this in the form of uh, meetings when like project manager uh, and team has dedicated time like once a week at least uh, they are gathering together and spend uh, some time based on the outcome uh, of the previous uh, spring. They are updating uh, the dates, they are updating the amount of efforts, etc. So uh, for now, like, this is the best uh, recommended approach. Gather people together, they are talking, they are having this uh, confirmation from different sites uh, what need to be changed um, and this uh, this all related to work items uh, key results and business objective are rarely changed so usually they have created uh, at the beginning and then again where they are being changed very rarely only thing that usually change is the finish date Okay, thank you. More questions? Yeah, I just wanted to go back to the exporting and importing tool. So you mentioned that we can export it to Excel and then import it and reconnect that sheets. Yeah. Uh, how much in terms of effort does it take? Is it like quick to do or you need some extra steps to do it? For me, it would take probably one hour with coffee break. Uh, if you are not for familiar with how it works, uh, you would spend one, two days watching uh, some tutorials. Uh, there are, by the way, uh, a lot of tutorials in YouTube, a huge community, active uh, community that help you resolve almost any issues. You, will, um, you could be always sure you will find the answer or someone will try to sell you the answer yeah that's like tricky things uh there is a community uh website market, where you could marketplace uh, okay. <laughs> yeah 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 marketplace so uh, there are people who are sharing their solutions for free as well as people who are saying i could do this in, in few minutes you just need to uh, share uh, like uh, your file uh, with me and this will cost you this amount of money so something like this okay and like if i use that paid export tool yeah it will import it automatically without any additional setup uh, yeah yeah so uh, you you would be able to like uh, export the whole uh, the whole uh, of worksheet uh, the whole space uh, it could contain uh, several files it uh, would contain the, uh, dashboards project etc etc so uh, yeah it's really convenient unfortunately i didn't use it in real life uh, but people saying that it exists <laughs> you could try it by the way a uh, smart sheet uh, you could try for saturdays days for free uh, with all uh, features uh so uh, it it would be enough to like um, to understand if this uh tool uh could cover all your needs for your project and then you will decide uh, what pricing model will be uh, suitable for you okay thank you 
Okay, we have a few minutes uh, left, and I would uh, briefly talk about the other use cases that we uh, recently tried uh, for what we, we recently tried to use SmartSheet. And this is like uh, the real uh, pre sale. So, uh, what we have from client, we have uh, Google Doc uh, with in the form of a brief uh, about the what what they want from us uh, they already organized in the some uh, like uh, hierarchical, hierarchical items and what we did is just copy paste them uh, here in project plans so uh, there were four business objectives each of them has uh, some particular key result uh, so what you currently see, this uh, blue and light blue items, it's something that was provided um, by the client. <clears throat> we put it here and then we uh, start, uh, we organize uh, teams. Uh, there, are, there were like a discovery team, I would say so, a couple of tech leads, uh, myself, uh, project manager, and we were talking about what needs to be done uh, to fulfill uh, the, the needs of the client. And we, we have produced those uh, working items, put uh, possible uh, teams uh, who will be working on them and provide uh, the level of effort. So this is like classic uh, estimation uh, approach that we are using. And uh, we spent uh, for, for, for this work, we spent three, uh, four sessions for one hour. So it's like uh, uh, four hours later, uh, we have this um, like easily crafted project plan. And uh, the most crucial part uh, is when we switch to capacity calculation for this uh, work, we were able to understand the amount of work that uh, could be done, uh, that need to be done. And we could say like, okay, to if this work uh, would be, if we would be able to do this work uh, in parallel, uh, it would be enough uh, eight developers for three months. So this is like, uh, the, yeah, we understand that this is the use case when uh, nine uh, women uh, should be able to give the birth to the child of, uh, for one uh, in, uh, in one month. And this is not uh, the real life. Uh, it's not possible in real life, but this still uh, help you to understand what is the uh, cost efforts for, the, for, for this like uh, pre-sale for this work, like eight developers for three months. Uh, you could multiply by um, by rates and that's it. Uh, you have the cost of the of this project. Uh, yeah, later uh, we would be doing this uh, capacity uh, dependency. Uh, we, we would need to de uh, detect the possible dependencies and what could be done and when, uh, take into account uh, location, uh, take into account uh, some other facts. And probably there would be like different uh, team composition. Like again, uh, eight developers, it's too much in one team. We would probably need to, to switch them to different teams. Uh, and so on. And we, we will split the scope and this will help us to understand uh, what team would be needed for how many quarters. And again, this is the way how you could calculate the cost of your project of this pre-sale. So today we have one number uh, <clears throat> after implementing dependencies, uh, after putting dependencies into project plan you will understand the real timeline, <clears throat> then you will be able to say, okay, we need like, uh, three teams, uh, three uh, people for three more months and then additional two uh, backend developers for uh, two months 
etc etc so based on this information you could uh, make your uh, projection or forecasting of your project more precise uh, so yeah uh, we are using this in real life as i mentioned and uh, i'm hoping uh, we will begin this uh, bit within this uh, project where this uh, this project plan will be using and in one year i could even provide some additional feedback or additional uh, session created to describe you how it was going how it, and how successful was the project and how successful was the experience of using project plan I see that we are out of time, but if you still have some questions, uh, I could probably try to answer them. If no, then, then that's probably it for today.